Welcome to Joburg Today. I'm your host, Leroy Viadri. The Homonaleri fossils have gained international rock star status and as such has been cemented by the international recognition of those involved in the discovery. This has catapulted the cradle of mankind into fame with excavations still continuing in the area. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you a new species of human ancestor, Homo naledi. The announcement of Homo naledi's discovery dominated news across the world in September last year. Since then, the world-famous National Geographic Society recognized Professor Lee Berger as its Rolex Explorer of the Year, while it named Dr. Marina Eloid as one of its 13 emerging explorers of 2016. Criticized for being unable to date the bones at the time, Professor Berger and his team have been working hard. The difficulty we had in dating the Homo naledi deposit is that it's almost utterly unique. We've never seen anything like that. The fossils were on the surface or just below the surface, but in a mud-like sort of um, environment and not actually rock. So it's a lot easier to pull the actual fossils out from the mud, but um, they are very brittle. That has required us to be uh, very creative in the methods that we use. So I can assure you this we're not going to come out with a date lightly. When we come out with a date, uh, I would like it to have at least three independent methods. And that is going to take a little bit of time and a little bit of effort. It also sounds as if Homo naledi could perhaps get a date or at least a new friend this year. We made another significant discovery. But at this present moment in time, that discovery will be announced next year. The reason being, we're not trying to be nasty, but the, the, the uh, uh, locality is quite accessible and we would not like people to go there in, in order to perhaps damage the, uh, the, uh, the deposit. One can only wonder what Homo Naledi may have said about all of this. But only time will tell if 2016 will be as dramatic and exciting as 2015 in Homo Naledi world. Marisa de Clark, Joburg Today. Like us on Facebook, that's JoburgToday.tv. Follow us on Twitter at Joburg Today. In a first for hominin excavation, a unique combination of digital imagery technology has allowed for scientists to create a 3D map of the caving system. The cramped conditions in the Rising Star Cave System and the Dinaledi Chamber where the Homo Naledi fossils were found begged by paleoanthropology standards for unique mapping and excavation documentation treatment. So Ashley Kruger and his colleagues decided on going 3D rather uniquely. We used a lot of new techniques to uh, map and visualize this chamber and as well as the Rising Star Cave. And uh, there was a lot of new technologies that we had to amalgamate together. So we had to connect them all together. Um, we had drone photogrammetry, which is uh, flying an unmanned aerial vehicle. Um, we also had laser scans and we had uh, white light source scans inside the chamber and we had to link all of these together and that was very challenging because it's never really been done before. Only the petite underground astronauts could go down into the Dinaledi chamber. But scientists like Professor Lee Berger above ground also needed to look at the excavations approximately 38 meters below the surface. Once again, the 3D technology was handy. The most exciting part of this technology use was um, really seeing the excavations come to life above ground. By creating a 3D model of the excavation areas, we were able to take those um, scans up to the surface uh, in almost real time. So uh, other people above ground could give suggestions to excavators on how to proceed, but that all in 3D. The handout scanner is uh, really Im important and it was an uh, important tool for us uh, because it's very small. So of course it can fit down the narrow chute, uh, go through that 18 centimeter gap uh, and it could fit into the Dinaledi chamber. But it was also important because it captures um, very high resolution images. 
And so we had a very accurate and high resolution 3D model of the excavation areas. And that's always important because we never know what kind of data we'll use much later on. But the high tech didn't quite conquer the chute leading into the Dinaleri chamber. The chute leading down to the chamber was impossible to scan because of its really small nature. And there's no scanner around today that can actually scan that, that area. And so we had to use um, a little bit more uh, primitive, if you want to call it that, uh, laser distance meter, which was able to give us known points above the chute and known points within the Dinaledi chamber so that we could link the chamber to the rest of the cave system. So we don't have a visualization of the actual chute, but we do have a very accurate placement of it. Being the largest hominin find in Africa, the Homunaledi fossils will keep scientists busy for a long time to come. The 3D framework and map will be useful. And so once we uh, develop the excavations and the excavations are ongoing, uh, we can still plug them into this larger framework. So in terms of the work that we've done here, the way forward is to look at uh, and analyze the 3D models of the excavation area and see if they can tell us something about the Homo naledi assemblage. Can they tell us something about Homo naledi's life and more importantly, something about its death? In the meantime, scientists working on dating the Homo naledi fossils are currently consolidating results of all tests. Marisa de Clerc, Joburg Today. I'm John Tarode and you're watching Joburg Today. Well, that's it for today's show, but if you want to know more about what's happening in Johannesburg, check out our playlist. From me, Leroy, and the guys behind the scenes, Till next time.